The day the U.S. and the China concluded three days of talk, now how much confidence do you have for the agreement to be signed before March 1st? I think there still needs to be a lot of negotiation. Uh, difficult to say with a lot of certainty that there can be a conclusive outcome that'll be, uh, you know, a success. I, I think that, that Trump continues to hold a very hard line there, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I think. He will try to, to present things in a way that looks like a success for for him, uh, but uh, you know a lot needs to be done to, to really get there. So and how would minor concessions that China gave in the trade talks affect the market during this point in time? Well, I think that that's expected. I think people realize that, that China needs a certain amount of goods and needs to buy things from the U.S. And I think that'll that'll happen. Uh, whether uh, the U.S. relents and Trump is willing to negotiate. Uh, that's you know, part of the, the the grand plan, and that you never know really what with Trump. Even when he says things, whether you believe them or not, it's more based on action. Deal or no deal? From technical view, from fundamental view, you think uh, they're going to affect the market that much? Well, the perception, uh, the markets move based on a number of different factors, and it's tough to just pin this all based on U.S.-China trade talks. I, I think people are concerned about the slowdown in the economy and earnings about the, the Federal Reserve, whether in fact they're going to continue to hike. And based on the news we've recently heard, it seems like they're willing to uh, take a measured pace and, and wait for the data and not uh, continue to hike. So. Um, you know, I'm hopeful that there's negotiation on both sides and that something can get done. And so we'll, we'll put it that way. Technically, the market is still in uh, bad shape. And so mm -hmm. we've had a decent rally in the last couple of weeks, about 10 to 15 percent in some indices. Uh, but now we're approaching a real important area where things very well could could hold off. You know, we could we could stall out and, and roll over a little bit. And that's to be expected because we're still very much in a downtrend. There's still issues with uh, you know, things slowing down measurably. I think we heard results from Apple and Samsung just a, as, a, as a couple examples that things are slowing. Um, yeah. From your point of view, even if the U.S. reaches the trade agreement with China, can you last? It depends on what's decided. I, I think uh, I'm, I'm skeptical, honestly. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, but I don't think that the bigger picture that um, everything the U.S. is asking is going to be granted, uh, and that's tough to see that happen before March. So How to get Trump is going to have to concede and say that it just can't happen, and um, you know, as they say, you know, baby steps and, mm -hmm. and, and a little bit of movement from from both sides to come together, and that's what could be seen as a, as a as a deal. But whether it's really what uh, needs to be done is a, is a different story. As an investor, how to get prepared like uh, during this kind of it's situation. difficult because the market continues to move based on uh, headlines and short-term uh, talking points, and, and a lot of the algorithms we've caught. It's resulted in a lot of volatility that's really served to shock investors for the first time in years. Uh, but it's mostly been the U.S. that's happened to recently. I mean, most of the world peaked out in 2015, so we've seen broad-based weakness throughout Europe and Asia for some time. Mm -hmm. It's more just the U.S. has finally joined the party and mm -hmm. has started to weaken. So uh, it's important that investors be diversified and that they realize that you know we, we're entering a new cycle where things can be very volatile and. Uh, it's important to you know, potentially consider other asset classes outside of just equities.